If you're a surf skate beginner, you should focus first on learning how to ride before learning how to upgrade and customize your surf skate. But if you're a serious surf skater, at some point in your journey, you're going to want to learn upgrades and customizations. Not only will that optimize your performance, but also, if you're asking me, experimenting with custom setups is a big part of the fun of surf skating. So in this guide, I'll give you everything you need to know to build any custom surf skate you can imagine and with the best performance possible. I'm going to cover a lot in this video, but you can use the timestamps in the video description below to skip to any of these topics. First, I'll walk you through all the tools and supplies you'll need for advanced customizing. From there, I'll cover individual aspects of your surf skate in order of what I think is most important, including your deck, the front surf skate truck, the rear surf skate truck, wheels, bushings, bearings, pivot cups, bushing washers, grip tape, foot stops, and nose guards. Then to make things even more practical for you, I'll finish by walking you through a few of my custom setups, and I'll walk you through what I've learned in the process of building each of them so you can learn from my process. I've also created a PDF download for you that gives you links, visuals, and instructions for the most important information I give you throughout this video. It includes links to the hardware and other accessories I mentioned throughout to make customizing even easier for you. So pause the video now and grab that download before continuing. Let me first walk you through all the tools and supplies that I use all the time when I'm customizing. And you don't necessarily need all of this stuff, but I'm just going to show you all the stuff that I use. First and foremost, we have skate tools. And I use actually both. This one I just use most of the time for just everyday use. But then I also have one of these on hand because I'll use this to push in bearings into wheels. And you can use the wheel axles to do that too. But every once in a while, I just like having this on hand. Next, you're going to want to drill with both Allen and Phillips bits. Then I will use a ratchet wrench all the time. I use this a lot on the waterborne surf adapter and rail adapter. Next, you're going to want some Allen wrenches, and I have these in both standard and metric. Next, I have needle nose pliers and channel locks, and I'll use these a lot when working with the waterborne surf adapter and rail adapters. I use a hammer to pound out the kingpins of waterborne surf adapters to change out the bushings. If you're going to be applying grip tape, you want a utility knife and then a grip tape roller like this. And then if you really want to get advanced, here's some kind of more advanced tools. I will use digital calipers all the time and I use these to measure the size of bushings. Next, I use a Shore A durometer gauge all the time for measuring the hardness of bushings. And there are different types of durometer gauges so you want to make sure that you get a Shore A durometer gauge. Then I will use a Dremel to carve out wheel wells, especially if I'm working with like the Waterborne Surf Adapter or the Yao Meraki. And if you do that, you want to make sure that you use a good metal carving bit like this. Next, you're going to want to have a lot of hardware on hand and I'll walk you through this. You'll also want to have a variety of bushings on hand. You also are going to want some risers and you may even want some wedge risers depending on what you're doing. And then if you're doing a lot of custom setups like with say the waterborne surf adapter, you're going to want to have a variety of trucks on hand, TKPs and RKPs. And you can typically just find these on old skateboard or longboard decks. If you're going to be doing a lot of customizing, then you need a lot of hardware. So I have a drawer in my tool chest where I keep all of my hardware and I get all this hardware from boltdepot.com. And what I have is a bunch of bolts in quarter inch increments from 5 eighths inch all the way up to 2 inches. And you can get them with either Allen or Phillips heads, that's just personal preference. And you may want to have all sizes in both black and silver to match your custom setups. So we have here 5 eighths of an inch, we have 3 quarters of an inch in both black and in silver. We have 1 inch, 1 and an eighth, 1 and a quarter, 1 and a half, 1 and 3 quarters, and two inches. You're also going to need some nuts and you want to make sure that they're the hex nylon insert lock nuts because it's that nylon that locks them in place. So you're going to want some 1032 nuts and these are for attaching your base plate to your deck. You'll need some 5 16 and these are for attaching your wheels to your axles and you'll need some 3 8 and these are for attaching your hanger to your kingpin. As far as bushings go, I'm going to get into more detail on this later but if you're doing a lot of customizing, you're going to want to have a lot of bushings on hand and eventually you're going to want to have some kind of a storage solution like this this to keep all of your bushings. When you're building a custom surf skate, your first decisions are number one, which deck you're going to use, and number two, which surf skate truck you're going to use with it. It's difficult to separate the two because they're very much interrelated. Some surf skate trucks are more universal than others and work on just about any deck, while others work best only on specific types of decks. Also, every surf skate truck changes your wheelbase measurement. So a truck that has an axle that hangs further back, like the Smooth Star Thruster, may not work on a deck that will work for the Carver C7, for example. 
So when I'm building a custom surf skate, the first thing I do is choose the deck because that determines everything else. The deck wheelbase and other properties determine how the ride will feel and perform, and the deck determines which surf skate trucks will work best. So you want to build everything around the deck. The aspects of a surf skate deck to consider include wheelbase, length, width, shape, concave, tail, flexibility, and rocker or camber profile. Wheelbase is the measurement between your inner bolt holes. And I list wheelbase first because, in my opinion, when choosing a surf skate deck, that's the first and most important aspect to consider. The reason for this, if the wheelbase on your deck is too narrow for your stance width, then it'll be unrideable for you. So if that's the case, then none of the other deck properties matter. This is particularly true if you use a truck that has a far setback axle that narrows your wheelbase, such as the Smooth Star Thruster, the Sweltec, or the Yamaraki. I've covered this topic of wheelbase in a lot of other videos, so if you want to dive deeper on that, just click the link to the video above. Once you have a good understanding of how wheelbase relates to surf skate trucks, then to choose one, you need to know what you're going to be doing on it and how you want it to feel. For example, if you want a bull riding setup, then you probably want a deck with a narrower wheelbase and good concave to lock your feet in. If you want a smooth and flowy cruiser, a wide wheelbase with little or no concave will work well. So here are some general guidelines to help you choose your surf skate deck. For tighter, sharper lines and short distance skating, go with a narrower wheelbase. For longer, smoother, flowier lines and longer distance cruising, go with a wider wheelbase. For high performance riding, including snaps, slides, and bull riding, you want good concave to lock your feet in. The less aggressive you're skating, the less concave you need. I also want to say a word about flexibility because that's a huge aspect for me. One of the aspects I love most about sole boardies is their very high torsional flex, and that refers to the board twisting in the middle as it responds to your movements. And on these crazy long boards I've been playing with, my favorite ones have the most flex. So if you haven't yet played with flexible decks, I highly recommend that you do. I also recommend that you try decks that have a camber profile with a lot of flex. I have two examples of this here, this classic deck from Booyah Boards in Germany and this Hackbrett Longboards deck, also from Germany. That combination of the camber with flex is a really fun, bouncy, lively feel and is fantastic for long distance pumping. As far as surf skate deck options go, you can choose decks from surf skate companies, there are a handful of aftermarket companies that make decks for surf skate specifically, or you can just use any skateboard or longboard deck you want. If you're looking at decks from surf skate companies, I personally like Yao and Carver decks the best, and that's good because they're really the only companies that sell their decks separately, although Carver doesn't offer their whole lineup of decks. My personal favorite aftermarket at surf skate decks are from Solbordi in Slovakia and Avion in Spain. Whitetail Skateboards in Canada offers a couple great options with high concave and steep tails and noses for versatile skaters, especially those with a traditional skating background. I recently received these two Buya boards from Germany and these are extremely well constructed, they feel fantastic and they look gorgeous. Zenit has a couple of options, although I haven't tried them yet. There's a company in Germany called Kobar or Koabar, not sure how to pronounce it. And those decks look great in pictures, but I haven't been able to try one yet. Pantheon also has a surf skate deck in the works that I'm looking forward to. And aside from that, you can just grab stuff off of eBay or Facebook Marketplace, or if you have the ability, you can even make your own. You can make pretty much any typical longboard deck work with a surf skate truck. You can use skateboard decks, but the challenge there is that the wheelbase will probably be too narrow for your stance width. So if you're going to do that, you either need to have a very narrow stance width or you need to find a skateboard deck that has a longer wheelbase than you typically see on skateboard decks. And if you want to use a deck that you love but the wheelbase is too narrow, one possible solution is the Remora wheelbase extender from Whitetail Skateboards. It's particularly useful for decks with sharp upturned noses. So whatever deck you use, the most important thing is that the wheelbase has to be wide enough for your stance width as compensated for the wheelbase offset of your surf skate truck. Obviously, the more surf skate trucks you have, the more customization options you have. But start with what you have and then expand your options as you have the budget. If you want to add more surf skate trucks to your quiver for the purpose of making custom setups, then unless you really want the decks on the complete models, don't buy complete models, just buy the trucks alone. The surf skate trucks that you can buy separately include the Avion Pro, Aquilo, Carver C7, Carver CX, Curveboard, Grasp, Slide, Waterborne Surf Adapter, and Yao Meraki. When I'm choosing a surf skate truck for a custom setup, the most important aspects that I consider are, first of all, feel, by which I mean does it feel more loose, smooth, and flowy, or does it feel more tight, sharp, and snappy? Wheelbase offset, rebound, rail-to-rail -rail lean, forward momentum, weight, and customization options. If you're asking me, the first four surf skate trucks that I would want in my quiver to give me a wide range of customizing options are the Carver CX, Waterborne Surf Adapter, Yao Meraki, 
Chucky and Avion Pro. From there, I would also add the Carver C7 and Grasp. And if I wanted even more options than that, then I would consider the Aquilo and possibly the Curveboard. If you want to experiment with a lot of custom setups, but you don't want to spend a fortune on surf skate trucks, the Waterborne Surf Adapter has a distinct advantage. The reason being, assuming you already have a lot of TKP and RKP trucks to work with, it's the cheapest way to build out a lot of custom setups. If you use the Waterborne Surf Adapter, then I highly recommend that you replace the bushing in it. And I recommend that you bump that up to the Riptide bushing in 97.5 aderometer. That gives the Waterborne a lot more rebound, and in my opinion, makes it feel much better regardless of your weight. When matching a surf skate truck with your deck, you first need to know which trucks are even options for you based on your deck wheelbase and your stance width. Next, you need to know how you plan on using it. For example, for bull riding and pump tracks, you probably want a more stable bushing base system like the Carver CX or Grasp. For surf training on smooth surfaces, you probably want something loose, smooth, and flowy like the Avion Pro, Yamaraki, Waterborne Surf Adapter, or Carver C7. If you want to skate longer distances, you'll want trucks that generate more forward momentum when you pump. And these are the Carver CX, Carver C7, Waterborne Surf Adapter, and Yamaraki. Another thing to note is that wheel bite can become an issue with some surf skate trucks, particularly the Waterborne Surf Adapter and the Yamaraki. Your possible solutions for that include adding risers, although I personally don't like this option because surf skate trucks are already so high off the ground. On the Waterborne Surf Adapter, you can use reverse kingpin trucks, which sit higher off the ground than traditional kingpin trucks. You can use smaller wheels, although I personally don't don't like wheel bite to determine the size of wheels I'm using, so if I want to use larger wheels, then I'll use other solutions. You can use narrower truck axles, or in a few of mine, I've used a Dremel to cut out wheel wells. A surf skate is more than just a loose front truck. It's a complete system with a front and rear truck to interact with each other. The three most common options we have for rear trucks on surf skates are TKPs with high risers, the Carver C2, and the Waterborne Rail Adapter. I've also heard of people using Goldwing Sidewinders on the rear. Of these three standard options, I much prefer the Carver C2 and the Rail Adapter over just standard TKP with risers, so I highly recommend that you use either of these for your best custom setups. The Carver C2 gives you more turning ability. The Waterborne Rail Adapter doesn't turn as much, but it leans a lot more. And that lean allows your back wheels to hug the ground easier through tight carving. And that's as opposed to a TKP with risers where you can get a back wheel lifting off the ground if you carve too tightly. I haven't used the Waterborne Rail Adapter much in the past, but that's only because the stock rail adapter bushings are 85 aderometer, which is very soft, and so that can make it very divey, and it can also give me wheel bite. But as I've learned bushings, I've learned that the secret to making the rail adapter work really well for you is simply to upgrade and customize those bushings. So what I do is replace all of my stock rail adapter bushings with riptide bushings in either 87.5A or 90A, depending on how much I want it to lean. So if you use that rail adapter, the big thing to be aware of is wheel bite, which you absolutely will get if you're you're using just a TKP with wheels that are any bigger than about 63 millimeters in diameter. Your options to eliminate this are, first of all, you can do what I just said, which is to make those bushings harder. You can add risers, although like I said, I'm not a big fan of that because that puts your surf skate way off the ground. You can use reverse kingpin trucks instead of traditional kingpin trucks, which sit higher off the ground and completely eliminate wheel bite. You can use smaller wheels. You can use a narrower hanger on your TKP, or you can make wheel wells in your deck. If you haven't upgraded your stock wheels yet, you'll be shocked by how much they improve the feel and performance of your surf skate. The aspects of a wheel to consider include rebound, diameter, durometer, width and contact patch, edge type, core placement, wheel surface, and urethane thickness. In the interest of time for this video, I'm going to just bottom line this by referring you to a link to the blog post you'll see on the screen. You can also find that link in the video description below as well as in that PDF download. But that article gives you everything you need to know to upgrade and customize your surf skate wheels. It also includes my top recommendations from all the aftermarket wheels I've tried. You can also pause the video now to study this infographic with surf skate wheel guidelines. A final note to mention about wheels is that I've heard some riders will use different durometers on front and rear. That's something I've never really had any interest in trying, but it may be something you want to experiment with. Like with your wheels, upgrading your stock bushings to high quality aftermarket bushings and also customizing them for your weight and preference can completely transform your surf skate. The two most popular companies for aftermarket bushings are Venom and Riptide. Personally, I upgrade all of my custom setups with Riptide bushings and I love supporting Riptide because not only do they have fantastic bushings, but also they're investing heavily into surf skating, which is something we haven't seen from any other bushing company. And we currently have bushings for the Carver CX, the Almiraki, the Waterborne Surf Adapter and the Waterborne Rail Adapter. Adapter, and these are all available at surfskate.love forward slash shop.
So here's how I go about upgrading and customizing with bushings. First, I find out three things about the bushings that I'm replacing. I need to know the type of bushing, which on a surf skate is typically going to be a barrel or a cone. I need to know the size of the bushings and not just the height, but there's other measurements as well. And this is where your digital calipers are very useful. And then I need to know the durometer of the bushings. And this is where I'll use my Shore A durometer gauge. And I always use that durometer gauge because even though stock bushings will say that they're listed at a certain number, my experience is that most of them are actually off from what they're listed. So the type, size, and durometer of the bushings gives me the baseline information that I need. From there, I need to know how my weight corresponds with the durometers of my replacement bushings. The bushing durometer that you use is based on a combination of your weight and your personal preference. But when you buy stock models, you get whatever durometer that comes on their stock bushings, whether you weigh 120 pounds or 250 pounds. So the point of replacing your bushings isn't just to improve your performance, it's also to get the durometer right for your weight. What I've learned from experience in working with bushings bushings is that there's typically a three durometer range that I'll choose from when I'm customizing surf skates depending on the feel that I want. So let's use the Carver CX for example. CX bushings come stock in 89A durometer. I weigh about 190 pounds and that durometer is actually pretty perfect for my weight. The closest equivalent in Riptide bushings is their 90A bushings. So at 190 pounds the yellow 90A Riptides are what are best for me. But if I want my surf skate to feel looser and flowier, then I'll go down to that softer 87.5 aderometer. Or if I want something a little bit stiffer, I'll move up to that 92.5 aderometer. Or I'll do a combination of these depending on my setup. So at my weight, my three durometer range in Riptide bushings is 87.5A, 90A, and 92.5A. And that holds true for me with pretty much any surf skate, whether it's the Yao, the Waterborne, the Carver, or whatever else. So that's my three durometer range based on 190 pounds. But let's say you weigh 150 pounds. In that case, I would say that your three durometer range is the 85A, 87.5A, and 90A. Or if you weigh 225 pounds, I would say that your three durometer range is 90A, 92.5A, and 95A. Once you know that three durometer range based on your weight, then you're gonna to wanna to get all of your bushings for all whatever surf skate trucks you wanna customize and put them all in a storage solution so you have easy access to them when you're customizing. So whenever I'm building a custom setup, I have all the bushings I need right here. A final note on this is that you can mix and match your bushing durometers to even further fine tune the feel of your ride. For example, you could have different durometers on your board side and roadside bushings. You could even have different durometers for every bushing. If you want to do this, and we're talking about this Carver CX specifically, I've discovered a couple general guidelines for this. First of all, if you want to mix and match duros on your board side and road side, it's typically better to go with harder duros on your board side than on your road side. This is because that board side bushing carries your weight. So relative to the road side bushing, it's gonna be more prone to deform with the extra weight. A harder road side bushing also gives you more rebound back to center. Your second guideline for mixing and matching duros is if you wanna do different duros on your front and rear, it's typically better to do harder on the rear and softer on the front. And this is because what makes a surf skate truck work is the combination of that more stable rear combined with the looser flow of your front. So you'll have to play with that to find your preferred feel, but if you haven't upgraded with bushings yet, I can promise you that they can completely transform your surf skate. As with wheels, I don't want to spend a lot of time on bearings in this video because I've already covered it in a very comprehensive guide. So if you want to dive deep into wheel bearings, then I'm going to refer you to the link to the blog article you'll see on the screen, as well as in the video description. And I'll also include a link to a video above. But I'm just going to bottom line this for you and say, I've tried over two dozen different aftermarket wheel bearings. And for me, the absolute best I've ever tried are these G-Bomb bearings. And this is what I use in all of my custom setups. I also recommend Zealous built-in bearings for a cheaper option. Upgrading your pivot cups is important because surf skate pivot cups are notorious for squeaking as you pump. You can get rid of squeaking by using either paraffin wax or marine grease in your pivot cups, but a better long-term solution is to just replace them with Riptide pivot cups. And we currently have pivot cups for the Carver CX, the Carver C7, and the Yao Meraki, and these are all available at surfskate.love forward slash shop. Riptide surfskate pivot cups come in their WFB formula. This formula has a unique lubrication added that doesn't bond with the urethane. So when you look at Riptide pivot cups up close, you'll see a white residue on them, almost like a chalky substance. That white residue is that lubricant, and it continues lubricating your pivot over time so you don't have to keep adding wax shavings or grease. Not only do your Riptide pivot cups stop squeaking, but they also improve your performance. You'll feel a slight difference in smoother, more effortless turns. 
On most stock surf skates, the bushing washers are cupped instead of flat, and that's because cupped washers hold the urethane in place better. But one simple way to change the feel of your surf skate truck is to simply replace your cupped washers with flat washers. This allows the bushings to move a little bit more, which increases your range of motion. That's a relatively minor detail, but it may be something that you want to play with. Another note I want to make about this is that it's fairly common to see Yao bushings break down. And I was talking about this with Brad Miller, the owner of Riptide, and I showed him all of these pictures. And he made the comment that he thinks those Yao bushing washers have too harsh of an angle, which makes them dig into those bushings. So that may be another reason to replace your bushing washers. Wedge risers are interesting to play with because they change the angle of your front or rear truck, which can change the feel quite a bit. And I haven't played around with these a lot on surf skate trucks because I honestly think that they're more applicable to disciplines like long distance pumping, but you do see them on complete models such as on the rear of Smooth Stars. You can either wedge or de-wedge trucks. Wedging means the thicker side of the riser is on the inside. De-wedging means the thicker side of the riser is on the outside. One truck that I have used wedge risers on is the Curveboard, and it makes a huge difference to the Curveboard. In my review of the Curveboard, I talk about it having relatively low rail-to-rail -rail lean and it having a bit of a hitch when you lean deep into the rail. But if you de-wedge the Curveboard with an angle of between 8 and 12 degrees, it completely eliminates both of those issues. It gives the Curveboard a lot more lean and completely smooth turns with no hitch whatsoever. So wedge risers may be something you want to play with, and if so, the best source for them is patsrisers.com. He offers a lot of different options. I grabbed his full kit, which comes in wedges in every degree from 1 to 20 degrees. I'm certainly no expert on grip tape, but working with grip tape is really easy. You have a lot of options for grip tape. You can get it in black and clear. You can get it with designs and patterns. You can get it in small strips or long rolls. I've applied grip tape to four boards so far. I've used clear grip tape on three of them, including this buoy here that you see. Just watch a quick YouTube tutorial before doing it. Another option for grip tape is Lucid Spray on Clear Grip Tape. I used it on this Hamboards Huntington Hop Deck and it worked fine, although it's not nearly as grippy as traditional grip tape. But the real challenge with that is that it wears off over time, and so if you ever want to replace it, what you have to do is actually sand that down to put something else on top of it. And if you're using a nice deck that you don't want to ruin, then you don't want to use that spray on grip tape. So while that spray on grip tape looks good, I don't recommend it. Foot stops can be attached to the front of your surf skate deck to lock that front foot in place so it doesn't move around when you pump. My friend Gavin Conti loves foot stops and he uses them on all his surf skates. And when you watch him skate, you'll see why. He skates very aggressively with a lot of deep carves and slides, so you can see why he would want that locked in feel. I've tried foot stops and I'm personally not a fan of them because I prefer to be able to shift my feet around, but that may be something that you want to play with. There are lots of foot stops available in the market. Riptide offers a few. The one Gavin Conti uses and recommends is from Roger Bro and you can find that at rogerbrosdh.com. Personally, I don't mind if my surf skates get a little wear and tear, but there are some that I really want to protect, like my sole boardies, and one easy way to protect them is to use rail guards. These come in strips and they slip easily around the rails of your deck. You can put them on the front or even on the back to prevent your rails from getting dinged by curbs and whatever else. So I've got a bunch of custom setups to show you here. I've got some kind of typical sane ones on this side. And then on this side, I've got a bunch of wild and crazy ones. I've recently got into these crazy long boards and I've had a lot of fun on these. So I'll walk you through these as well. But first, let me use these to just kind of walk you through the process that I've gone through to learn customizing, because I think that my process will be helpful for you to learn from as well. The process I've gone through is one of first narrowing and then expanding. So let me explain what I mean by that. My first phase of learning customizing was all about narrowing down my options to fine tune my preferences down to the tiniest little detail. So here's a good example of that real fine tuning process. We have a Soul Body Revolution Adam Carbonics with Yao Meraki front truck, Carver C2 on the rear, and on the rear truck we have Riptide bushings in 90A durometer, and on the front Meraki we have Riptide bushings in 87.5A durometer. So this right here is the best of the best of everything I've tried in one super fine tuned complete model here. Here's another example of this. This is my custom sole boardy mold, and this is what I use for bowl riding. So this is 32.5 inches long with a 17.5 inch wheelbase. We're running Carver CX trucks front and rear. I have Riptide 90A bushings 
on both front and rear. These are 65 millimeter 83A wheels with G-bomb bearings. And this is the sweetest bull ride I've ever tried. So that process taught me so much about every aspect of surf skates. I learned about decks, the front trucks, the rear trucks, how they interact with each other. I learned about wheels, bushings, bearings everything and now i use that knowledge to instead of like fine tuning like perfect rides now for me it's all about just expanding creativity and options and just finding the craziest stuff i can find on ebay to see what i can make work with the surf skate truck so here's where this process of getting into these crazy longboards started for me i have a buddy that i skate with in the bowl every morning and one morning he told me he had a bunch of longboards in his garage and he wanted me to take a look at it see if we could put some surf skate trucks on them so we went shopping in his garage and he had this gorgeous old classic nv 57 inch longboard with a lot of flex so i put a waterborne surf adapter on it with the carver c2 rear and i just fell in love with this thing this is so much fun i got totally addicted and so from there i just started looking on ebay and facebook marketplace for any deck i could find over 50 inches so right now you're seeing my collection of anything from 50 inches here all the way up to these three are 60 inches long here so this one here i call the boat it's 60 inches long it's 14 and a half inches wide so in this one i used the waterborne surf adapter and rail adapter and because this one is so wide what i did was i used paris trucks these are rkp so they're high enough up the ground where i'm not going to get wheel bite but these hangers are also wider than you get off of typical TKPs. So this is a really perfect formula for this deck. Out of all these crazy ones, I'd have to say that these two are my favorites. I call this one the Pink Panther for obvious reasons. So I found this old pink Sector 9 Luke Mills Walker on eBay, and I happen to have a pink waterborne surf adapter and pink old ABEC 11 wheels. And then I'm even using pink Riptide 87 and a half A bushings. And this thing rides like a dream. I love this thing so much. You also see on this one that I used a Dremel to cut out wheel bite marks. And so that completely eliminates wheel bite on the waterborne surf adapter. And one thing to note on this is you can get away with that. Well, first of all, if you're gonna use a Dremel, it's gonna be on decks that you don't really care about. So you can see how these are just old beat up decks that I don't care. But also you have to make sure that they're thick enough to be able to accommodate those wheel wells. Cause if you're dealing with one of those typical surf skate decks, they're not thick enough to actually do this. But you can get away with that on these long ones cause they're so much thicker. This is an interesting build with this coastal deck, which is 60 inch is long this one's a little bit stiffer than the ones with flex and so when it's this long and it doesn't have as much flex what i realized is you want a truck that has relatively low rail to rail lean and that is super smooth and fluid and that's because on these long boards i use my whole body to kind of swing that front side to side so if you have a front that's pretty tight it's a lot harder to use your body to do that with so in this particular build what works best is the aquilo truck because just like i said the aquilo has relatively low rail to rail lean so you're not going to have any wheel bite on this and it's really smooth and fluid which makes it really easy to ride this one even how long it is this one here kind of follows the same principle where i'm using the curf board instead of the aquilo again for the same reason because it's a really long inflexible deck and for that i want relatively low rail to rail lean and really smooth loose fluid front truck to make it really easy to swing with my front body and the curf board is perfect for that another interesting thing to note about this one is that i have de-wedge this curf board because like I said de-wedging the curf board fixes the issues that I have with it it makes it lean a lot more and it makes your turns completely smooth with no hitch whatsoever and you want to go anywhere from 8 to 12 degrees on the curf board and you want to make sure that you're de-wedging not wedging because if you wedge that doesn't work wedging would mean that the thicker part of that riser would be on this side another quick thing I want to mention while we have all these out is that I'm using either the waterborne surf adapter or the carver c2 rear on most of these because just like I said I much prefer for those over a standard TKP with risers. And with these long boards in particular, the waterborne rail adapter is very critical because it really helps you to keep those back wheels on the ground. Because with these long boards, you'll find that they're actually really quite slidey. Because when you're standing in the middle and that board's flexing, it's kind of lifting your wheels off the ground a little bit. So when you're dealing with these long boards, the rail adapter is critical. And you don't have to use it. Like for example, on this one, I'm running the C2 rear, but this one is way slidier than the rest of these. And maybe that's an effect that you want so that's something for you to play with. So my final note on this is when you're building custom setups, it really just starts with what are you wanting to do? Start there and then that determines everything else. So for example, let's say that you wanna do bull riding. 
Well, in that case, you're gonna want a relatively shorter deck with a relatively narrower wheelbase. You want good concave to lock your feet in. So in that case, you'd be looking at some decks like these, like this ABM Bellara works really well for performance riding and bull riding. This Soul Boardy, as I said, is fantastic. These Whitetail decks from Canada are also fantastic for bull riding. But if I wanted to do pure surf training on smooth surfaces, for that, I'd use something like these Booyah boards. So this is 35 and a half inches long and it has a few different wheelbase options. I think I'm actually running this on a 23 inch wheelbase. And this is the Abion Pro Truck, which feels similar to the Smooth Star Thruster. So this right here would be like a perfect surf trainer. If I wanted to do basically long distance cruising or long distance pumping, I would use a deck like this that's a little bit longer than you typically see and that has a little bit of a wider wheelbase than you typically see. And this one has a camber profile with a lot of flex. And like I said, that makes it really fantastic for long distance pumping. So if you wanna jump on a surf skate and ride forever, this would be something you'd go with right here. So I hope you found all this helpful as you're learning how to build out your own custom setups. And I hope you have as much fun as I have building out customs.